Today we're heading straight back into the Deathmatch Arena of Death, where we're pitting the legendary GT710 versus its precursor granddaddy, the GT210. Truly a clash of the titans. But before that, we have a video sponsor that's gonna help me pay for my terrible graphics card addiction. Today's video is kindly sponsored by Skillshare, which is an online learning community that helps you learn to do things better. Skillshare offers many classes on a variety of topics like UX design, photography, filmmaking, and music production. And what's cool about it is it's got a best of section which helps you find the most popular classes for a specific topic. And it was using this that I found Hand Lettering in Motion by Jake Bartlett, which is a really good introduction to using After Effects, which is something that's pretty scary if you've never used it before. Skillshare is also affordable at $10 a month for an annual subscription. So use your off time to learn some more skills using Skillshare. And the first thousand people that clicks on the link below this video will get a free Skillshare premium membership. In all honesty, I'm pretty surprised that I've never done a video on the GT210 before because it's just straight up my wheelhouse. Now the GT210 is a bit of a weird graphics card because for some reason you can still buy them brand new on Amazon. With prime shipping, you can get one tomorrow if you wanted to, which doesn't really make sense considering the fact that it costs the same as a GT710. Let's jump straight into the physical differences between these cards. I am comparing the GT210 to the new Asus GT710, so it means that physically they look a bit different, but if you compare the GT210 to like a standard version of the GT710, they are suspiciously similar looking. As far as video outs go, they have the same accompaniment of ports. They've got a Cambrian period port, a Triassic period port, and an HDMI period port, I guess. But the new Asus version does destroy that output selection with four HDMI ports. The GT210 only has one gig of video memory and it's GDDR3 as opposed to the two gigs of GDDR5 on the new Asus GT710. So this may be a little bit of an unfair comparison. When it comes to the differences in actual GPUs between the two, when it comes to the GT710, it's got a massive 192 shading units with eight ROPs. Whereas the GT210 has 16 shading units and four ROPs. So there's a pretty big discrepancy in core power between the two, which does translate into a pretty big performance difference as well. And then finally, another big difference between the two is that the GT210 does not support DirectX 11. The newest DirectX standard that it supports is 10.1. So that does limit the games that you can use for benchmarking. When it comes to the actual benchmarks, I tested these two graphics cards in a system that matches its computational prowess. We've got a Ryzen 7 3700X running in there, just kind of doing its own thing, with 16 gigs of DDR4 3600MHz, just to make sure that there's no CPU bottleneck for these two behemoth graphics cards. Now starting off with the GT710's benchmarks, I actually had to scale down the resolution from what I normally used just to make some room for the GT210. But when it comes to GTA 5 running at 720p, it was actually surprisingly playable on the GT710. It looks a little bit like a used diaper, but it's it's fine. It runs very well, and there's not as much input lag as there normally is when trying to game at 1080p with this GPU. Rainbow Six Siege was also surprisingly playable. The same thing goes for Dota. Dota really does play surprisingly well on a GT710. I mean, even when you're not on the lowest settings at 1080p, it, it, it works pretty well. And then I also tested Half-Life 2, which is the only game that I tested at 1080p at medium settings. And again, the GT710 crushes it here. Finally, the most demanding game, I guess, that I tested in the lineup was Skyrim, which was pretty much averaging at 60 frames per second for the entire run. Now, again, this is at 720p. And if you crank it up to 1080p, it brings the GT710 to its knees. Now that we've got the baseline benchmarks out of the way, let's compare these two and see how well the granddaddy holds up. 
GTA 5 on the GT 210 is just completely unplayable. I mean, you're getting single digit average frame rates at 720p low settings here, which is which is genuinely shocking. Even Dota 2 was really struggling. It's pretty much entirely unplayable. I couldn't get Rainbow Six Siege to launch because Vulcan didn't work either and it doesn't have a DirectX 9 mode. Skyrim also brings the GT 210 to its knees even with a 720p resolution at low settings, it, it just couldn't run Skyrim. Just out of curiosity, I also tried running CSGO on the GT210, and CSGO at 720p on the GT210 runs worse than CSGO at 1080p on the GT710, which, yeah, that really tells you a lot. And then the final shocking result is trying to play Half-Life 2 on the GT210. Look at that! I mean, it's it's basically running, but I can't remember the last time I saw a system that got less than a 200 frame per second average on Half-Life 2. These results are genuinely shocking. This is like PC stick level gaming performance. It really is... Yeah, this GT210 does, does not hold up very well. And another big issue that it has, just aside from gaming benchmarks, because, I mean, it's obviously not a gaming graphics card, is the driver support. The latest GPU driver that you can download for the GT210 comes from 2016. Why can you still buy this GPU new? It doesn't make any sense. It costs pretty much exactly the same as a GT710. Okay, it doesn't cost the same as the Asus version of the GT710, but still, it doesn't matter. Why would you buy this? It, okay, I, I, I don't know why I'm saying that because I know a bunch of you are already very snarkily replying to, oh, this is obviously the use case for it. But if you're looking for just a video out, just splurge the extra three or four dollars and buy the GT710 just for the better driver support because that makes a really big difference. Um, but yeah, I'm actually surprised at how bad the GT210 was. I know that that sounds like a ridiculous thing to say, but it, it, it really was shockingly terrible. If you like this video, like and subscribe to the channel. If you want to watch another video, go check out that, that Craigslist uh, PC build that I did the other day. That's such a, such a ridiculous video. I can't, I can't believe that dude charged $100 for that build. Um, yeah, so with that, thank you very much for watching. And until the next video, bye-bye.